How's it going everybody? You know who it is. My name is Sunwoo and in today's video we are going to take a look at the OP1's arpeggiator. In a nutshell what the arpeggiator does is you input a note or multiple notes and depending on these settings up here and these settings down here it will add notes at different intervals to those notes you played and then play them in a certain pattern. And how it does this we're going to figure out now by going through each of the single parameters. As always let's start with the easy parameters. The blue parameter right here determines the tempo of our arpeggio. And the shift function for the blue encoder determines the length of our note. And next up the red knob puts the arpeggio on hold meaning I don't have to keep holding down the key in order to play the sequence but instead I press the key, press hold and it will keep playing. The shift function for the red knob is the swing parameter that means it shifts every other note slightly to the right or slightly to the left. Alright now let's get to the more interesting and maybe complicated parameters. Let's start with the beige knob right here. I'll turn this to once for now. I'll explain what that is in a second but first let's get to the shift function right here. So the beige shift function right here determines which notes are being added to your original note. Right now if I turn the arpeggio off this is my original note. And if it's set to type 0 that means it will add one octave up to my original note meaning it will play this. As you can hear now. And if I set this to type 1 it will add an octave up as well as an octave down. Type 2 gets a little more complicated. I'll turn the speed down for this one so we can better hear what it does. It will play my original note, add a minus 5 semitones to it. It will add a plus 7 and a plus 9 so it will sound something like this. And let's hear if this works out. And finally type 3 arpeggiator will play my original note plus 2 semitones plus 4 semitones plus 5 plus 7 and plus 9 so it will sound like this. And again let's hear if this is true. And now let's go through the beige parameter functions without the shift button. First we turn it to none and I'll enter three notes. And you can hear it only plays these three notes. It doesn't add anything to it. Same if I play one note. It will just keep playing one note although my type is set to play the normal note and one octave up but since I have selected none here that means it doesn't add any new notes to the sequence. If however I turn the beige knob to once that means it will play all my originally input notes first and then will add a single note at the end and that single note is this one here one octave up. So this trigger mode just means that it will add a note to the last note I played in the sequence. Now if we turn this to each this means it will add a note to each of the notes that I've played originally which means it will play this note first and then it will add an octave up to this note then it will play this note and then it will add an octave up to this note and then it will play this note and again add an octave up like this.
And then we have the all mode. And this mode means that my complete sequence will be played. So these three notes right here will be played. And then it will add three more notes at the end of those, which are one octave higher than these notes because we have selected the type zero trigger mode. So let's try this out. As you can hear, it went like this. One octave higher, one octave down again, and so on. So the all mode just goes between your original notes and the arpeggiated or changed intervals. And finally, the last trigger mode is called trig. Best that I understand it is that it doesn't add any new notes, but it puts an emphasis on the first note you have played in your sequence. So if I start with this one, it will play this more often and also will play this underneath other notes. So it will double other notes with this one right here. Yeah, but that's all about I can say about this trigger mode. If you have a clue, share it with us down in the comments because we all like to learn. And now we move over to the last function which is controlled by the gray knob up here and down there. Just like in the endless sequencer, the gray parameter gives us different patterns that determine how our notes are being played back. So right now this pattern up here of four dots and no dashes would mean that my whole sequence, including the arpeggiated notes, will be played back as they are supposed to be played back because each dot represents a played note. So if I entered these three notes right here, it would go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on, just like this. If however I change to a different pattern like this one here for example and I have the gray shift function turned to this pause symbol right here and I enter these three notes right here it would mean it plays notes one so this one one two and then there's a dash and that dash means in conjunction with the pause symbol here that this note here will be muted so it will play one two three muted, four, one, two, three muted, four. Just like this. And if I now changed the gray shift function to this symbol right here, that means that the dash doesn't represent a pause anymore, but instead a skipped note. So if I played, for example, four notes now, that's easier to demonstrate. I turn the sequencer off for a second. I have one, two, dash, four. So it would play one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, and it would ignore step number three, just like this. No pause and no note number three. And of course, if we enter three notes that can give us nice irregular patterns. So yeah, shift gray either skips a step or it pauses a step. So that's it for the single functions of the arpeggio. Of course, I tried to keep it as simple as possible in order to explain them. But once you combine all the different parameters, you can go very crazy with this. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I would really appreciate a like and a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell if you want to see more. In fact, probably over here is another tutorial. And if you want to support me, click over there. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.